Hey, it's Keith from My Lost Speed Shop, and this week is the Pooptastic Hauler. Um, obviously, it's the Matchbox Poop King casting, and I'm going to put my own spin on it. It's been hot as hell here, humid, um, would have been kind of a pain in the neck to paint. Um, things will probably never dry with the humidity as high as it is. So I figured I'd kind of put my own little touches on it. I got some real riders that I picked up from Treads 164, and I thought I'd kind of make it my own and put my own little outlaw spin on it and see how it comes out and it was a it was kind of a quickie uh, it was a busy week so it worked out really well as always if you you know happen to like what you see make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified so obviously step one is to take it apart you're gonna have to bear with me i've gotten tons of flack about uh, my camera angles and I do it for convenience to be honest with you because doing it like this is a royal pain in the neck um, I just can't work like this I did try it obviously um, I feel like my hands are in the way more than when it's kind of like over my shoulder or off at like um, 10 o'clock angling down but anyways um, obviously start by drilling out the posts this was kind of a pain in the neck to take apart. It was a little little stubborn, let's say, but a little bit of um, brute force mixed with a oomph of finesse, and it does come apart. No problem. Um, obviously, I use a screwdriver, or a small one, to, to pry, and sometimes you have to go back and re-drill. This one, usually the uh, little... The rivets will actually, a little ring will come off. That's how you know you've gone just right. Um, this one had never happened. The metal seemed like a little little softer than, than most, but um, overall, not too, too bad. Um, comes in three pieces. There's nothing fancy, or four pieces if you count the uh, the shitters. So, the obviously, you get the chassis, and then the interior, or the middle piece, I guess you could say, has the fuel tank, the bed, and a one-piece glass that's painted, or it's all molded black, so there's no interior at all in this, um, which is fine. So that's that. So here I kind of took my wheels. I just the axles are three times longer than they need to be, obviously, but um, I just wanted to see how it was going to look and the stance and the rake and everything else that I was kind of looking for. Um, you know, I just kind of popped them in after I popped the original Matchbox wheels out. So there's going to be some axle tube making. I've got my 1 16th k &S brass tubing. Um, I pretty much put it in. I leave maybe a 16th on each side. And then I'll cut it on the inside of my black mark. So I'm just flipping it over and using both sides of the tube at the same time. So I can do the front and rear together. I have a Dremel tool with a cutoff disc. And I'll just um, pretty much hack it right off. Once you do, though, um, a lot of times it'll bend like it did. So you just file it. You don't have to do what I'm doing and risk life and limb. Um, but I've never cut off a digit yet. But I usually just grind down the end. So it, it always ends up with a little bit of a point. So this way it just grinds it flat. So that way the wheels don't catch on it. Obviously, as I've, if you watch any of my videos, um, anytime you use an axle tube, you have to kind of, well, I guess it depends on what stance you're looking for, but I always um, whore out the holes or widen the holes a little bit, the track where the, um, the brass tube is going to sit, and then you can kind of play around with your height. Obviously, the lower you go, you know, the, the higher it's going to be. It's opposite, if you think of it that way. So the front, I just kind of want exact to where it would have been originally. Um, and these wheels are smaller than the original ones that came on the casting to begin with. Um, so if you notice, I'm tr I cut the axle in half. And remember, these are really long. So then you got to kind of trim them down a little bit so that obviously you can't just cut it in half and stick it in the axle tube because you'll have the same problem. So you got to trim them down so that they both fit in there and one doesn't push the other one out. Um, that just creates problems. So it's best to check it now instead of finding out after you glue them. <laughs> so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. And then I kind of push it down, the axle down, to make sure that it doesn't push the other side out. And you do that for both front and rear. Then a lot of chassis, if you'll notice, even this one, it's got the uh, little tabs that actually kind of hold the wheels in. 
or the axles in. With a tube, obviously, it's uh, much wider. You know, it's double the double the size or triple the size of the regular axle. So you have to clear it out and make some sort of a clearance. Um, you know, you're going to be gluing the tubes in anyways. Um, so you, this is kind of a moot point, but you can, I don't like to have any kind of gap. So I want to make sure that I do the best I can to make it so that it sits as flush as I can and doesn't interfere when I go to put it together. Because if you don't, it'll ride too high or it won't sit over the axle and it'll, it'll just be a, a major problem. So it's best to do it now and fit everything kind of like what I'm doing. I'm putting everything together. Obviously, I didn't glue them in, but I'm sitting them there so I can kind of test fit just to see. Because actually, at this point, I realized that I got to drop the rear axle down further and cut a deeper groove in the rear so that it clears the the bed. So again, fit as many times as you need because when you go to put this together and something doesn't work, it's the most frustrating thing in the world. Uh, well, not the most frustrating thing, but one of the most frustrating things. So the other thing that kind of bothers me is this spare tire. Um, just really, I don't know. It's one of those things, I guess. So I decided to cut that off as well with my with my cutoff disc, which is uh, my favorite tool um, in my die cast arsenal, I guess you could say. So I cut off the bulk of it, then I go back over and I'll try to get it as close as I can to the actual chassis, and then I will grab a file and file it as smooth as I can. I'm gonna end up replacing something there, um, but you still need to have a good flat surface, otherwise, it's just gonna look stupid. Um, or I mean, I kind of took a, I cheated. I didn't get rid of the wheel in the middle underneath um, just because there was no way to do it structurally. And um, again, this was supposed to be a quickie. I didn't want to start going crazy with all the, the different things nobody's going to see underneath it anyways because it's going to go on my shelf and sit there until hell freezes over probably. But anyways, I got a bin full of parts and stuff I've gotten from various companies. And I'm just looking for something to put in place of a tire. Because um, the tire wouldn't have matched anything that I had on. It didn't match what was there to begin with because it was kind of a knobby tire. Um, so I found a little piece of rectangular. I don't even know what it's supposed to be. It's almost like an intercooler. So I'm going to end up using using that. It's just adding something there next to the fuel tanks. It just seemed like it was appropriate. It has no meaning. It has no purpose. <laughs> it's just something to fill the void. Um, on the second, you know, if you look, the uh, one side's got two things on it. This will have two things on it as well. Um, but you don't have to do that. Obviously, a lot of what we do, any customizer, it's all interpretation and, and preference and what we feel at the heat of the moment looks the best. Um, so I didn't like the fact that the the poopers were, were blue. So I primed them, and then I'm using... Um, orc green or something like that from um, Citadel. The the, the I want to call it, I keep calling it a chassis, but it's an interior piece, I guess you could say. I painted the gas tank, or I don't even know what the hell it is in the middle. Um, I guess it's where the poop goes, <laughs> and um, I painted that uh, lead belcher, which I haven't said in a long time. And then I'm using my chrome pen to do some of the details. I painted the oil. Um, the gas tank's yellow for diesel. And then I'm taking some Agrath Earthshade, which is a brown wash. And I'm washing the, um, the poopers. And I'm doing the um, aluminum pieces that I did on the actual um, interior. So now I'm taking some Typhus Corrosion, which is a, part of a two-step rust process. And I'm just kind of rusting out some different aspects of the, of the uh, vehicle, uh, mainly around the cab. And then once that's done, I just take my riser rust, which is another um, dry, dry paint. You just kind of dry brush it on there. And the heavier, it looks very orange, and it kind of is, but you put it over the typhus corrosion, and it looks awesome. And you can layer it. You can start off really, really soft and just putting a little bit. And then right next to it, you can go a little heavier. And that's what's great about this stuff is you, you, don't, you, can, you can't do too much. You know, it's all, again, it's all a matter of perspective, I guess. But I dry brush on a little bit at a time, and there's a spot right next to itself that I might go a little bit heavier and make it a little bit more orange, because not all rust is consistent. So I just kind of play around, and uh, again, there's no rhyme or reason or method to my madness. I just kind of dry brush till I think it looks good. Um, 
it's just something you got to kind of experiment with and have fun with. It's not, you know, I'm not even, I didn't even sand this or anything. I just, I put this right over paint. So if you want to play around with it and you grab some, and then all that's from Citadel, um, just grab a casting out of your, you know, I'm sure you have a casting somewhere in your collection that you hate. <laughs> just play around with it, you know, and, and, and just weather away. It, the worst you're going to do is screw it up. You just grab another one. Um, so you can kind of see here, I'm doing a tank and just hitting it a little harder in certain areas, especially the lift gate on the back, um, because that would be a heavy, uh, rusted area as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I am no expert, nor do I claim to be one when it comes to poop trucks. I have used porta potties many times on construction sites, um, but that's about as far as my knowledge goes. So, and here you can see, I can, I just keep grabbing a little bit more dry brushing it off, kind of counterproductive, but it's the only way to do it. And that way it controls how much you actually put on. And you just keep going until you think it looks good. And there's, again, no rhyme or reason. Um, everybody's got their own subjective opinion of what looks good and what doesn't. Obviously, this is what we started with a brand new in a package. Nothing spectacular, but it is what it is. This is what I ended up with. Again, this is, you notice I put, uh, I, I numbered the porta potties, number one and number two, and that's what their uses are for. <laughs> but um, I had fun with this. This was just a, it's a, it's damn hot, and I don't feel like doing a lot this week type of project so i hope you guys like it i got a couple of videos here and some pictures or glamour shots or whatever you want to call them um thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one